This was a 3.45 morning to get up. It's now just on five o'clock. Flight's at 6.15 to connect the Heathrow to go to Marrakesh. So Dacia's flying me down to uh, Marrakesh to test the new Dacia Duster. It is literally an one overnight <laughs> to Marrakesh with uh, Dacia UK. So it's gonna be a strange adventure. Stick with me and we're gonna see what it's all about. True security, no hassle at all. So for T2 is a different story. But I'm going to um, an airport lounge now. Mm -hmm. Very quiet lounge. Not much food though. That was nice, a little tiny pit stop for a bit of breakfast. I should have gone to our gate for time this way. Uh, it was actually quite nice, it was good. Uh, loads of people ask what kind of music I listen to when I'm the headphones on. And I actually listen to a lot of gorillas. Damon Alburn, one of the better bands that could be there, seeing live in Dublin. <laughs> Radiohead, there's a bit of that as well. Sometimes I listen to Brian Eno. Brian Eno is brilliant for airports. I think he actually has a playlist or an album. Music for airports, I think. <laughs> that has very good idea. Right, 410 is my gate and I'm heading down to it. Let's go. We are boarding on time. That's pretty good. We might just get out of here on time today. Because I have to the main connecting flight with the Germans. Heathrow Terminal 5 to get to Marrakech. I don't travel a lot. It's always a nice place to travel. Very delayed. Actually, just the connection. <laughs> this is good. Very exciting. Okay, I landed in Terminal 2, gotta get Terminal 5, so flight connections I gotta go for. Terminal 5 record, of course. Chance of me making this is gonna be very low. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the flight going out is delayed as well. It's now 10 to 9. It says now 20 to 10 for it departs. Flight misses last as well, so. Okay. Fingers crossed. God, I hate this. It's so stressy. Last one of the year as well. The adventure continues. Took me off the flight. Now to give me a different seat. Oh my God, the flight's today. Maybe aren't even boarding yet. And took me off the flight for whatever reason. Anyway, we made it. Well, that was an experience. Got me passport stamped on that, though. Sounds pretty good. To the exit. Let's get me out of here quick.
so I've landed down for a camp duster, which is what they're trying to do is get us to drive a Dacia duster, Dacia duster, Dacia duster, uh, all around this area. Just when you think you're on your own. I am the night. <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. good. Morocco's playing the World Cup. That man's very excited. Watch on his phone. My room number 69, Chaba. Isn't that gorgeous? This <laughs> is beautiful here. I didn't think I'd eat one in Morocco, but it is very cold and wet out there. That's probably where it's welcome. In the bar, of course. Despite an increase in features, uh, and equipment such as bigger wheels, multimedia systems, airbags, ECUs, pedestrian impact, and so on. Somebody should make a rap album out of the crickets. It's very late at night now. Well, it's not very late. It's quite past eleven. But um, I'm walking back up the room. We're supposed to leave in here tomorrow morning at. Uh, they say half eight. It'll be nine o'clock if it's raining, but half eight if it's not. We're going to try and get away more like eight o'clock. So breakfast at half seven. Anyway, let's see what tomorrow brings. Try to set my house. <laughs> What a place. Morning. It's time to go home. Look. It's Morocco. Anyway, it's not that cold here. Uh, Morocco's trying to save a bit of electricity, I think. You can turn on all the lights on the footpaths. So I can't see a goddamn thing. It's black. Yeah, it's definitely black. <laughs> definitely going the right direction. <laughs> Today I'm driving a Dacia Duster uh, out in the desert. When I say desert, it's mostly rock out here. Uh, Morocco's kind of a weird place. Not that much sand, only towards the beach. Anyway, it's going to be an adventurous day. Let's go get some breakfast. Lights, finally. How dark it is. <laughs> Down here and see who you are. Yeah. Yo, you're like a misty. Yes, you are. <laughs> a little bit of a risky misty. A Moroccan version. Have you got a Moroccan accent? Have you a Moroccan accent? <laughs> Hello. Oh, yeah. I need some carbohydrates. <laughs> Walking around looking for uh, cars now. I suspect it's near this castle y thing here. Oh, I see a lot of cars down there. Uh, I'm going to pick up my car now, and I can see it there, to go off into the desert. We're leaving Marrakesh. Head away. We should be good. Just a quick update on a map that is outside here. This is the hotel I'm staying in just south of Marrakesh. We're going to drive all the way down here into the area of the desert to the south of Marrakesh. Heading for that Roaches Norres uh, for a bit of lunch and then back up to the hotel in the afternoon before I catch my plane. There is my Dacia chariot behind me. See this here? That's her. This is going to carry me across the desert today in Morocco. I'm looking forward to this because it is a standard family vehicle we're looking at here. Let's have a quick look around it. Okay, let's not make any mistake in thinking that it's anything other than a standard Dacia duster that you would buy, even down to the road tyres that are on it. It has four by four. It is um, not only on Moroccan roads, but also in the Moroccan desert. And I hope you all want an orange one because they're all orange. I have my filming equipment. I have my camera staged in here. I have a GoPro in the middle. You can see it there. Behind that is the sat nav, of course. Uh, weird sat nav here. Um, very strange. They don't map Morocco very well. It's relatively new. They don't allow drone flying here uh, without special permission. They don't allow professional level camera equipment like big cameras and stuff through the airport without permission and a carnet and all the stuff that goes with it so we are 
in the raw today, let's say. Right, we're on the road again, heading towards those massive mountains. God, they are so big, those mountains. Half these motorbikes like chicken chasers, you know. So you get stuck behind them. And like this guy here, who's got his, where is he going? All oh, right, there's a massive pothole there. That's what he's trying to avoid. That's what that is. I'm in a duster. I didn't really feel it. Right. Let's get past the chicken chaser anyway. Love your helmet, man. So you have a backwards baseball cap made of plastic. The helmets here seem to be made of plastic. Whoa! I gotta show you that. Jesus, what a view! That is amazing out there. Huge mountains ahead of me. Massive mountains ahead of me. That is epic. If you're turning left in Morocco, got to be aware that the guy behind me has an indicator on right now to overtake me okay and so anything could happen now we 400 meters this is scary now because he's uh he's going to overtake me here he goes look i'm, I'm going to be turning left in 400 meters look at this just took in and waited for him to go by <laughs> oh my god this is Gary Morocco, I see a guy waving a flag at me, which is very good. That's nice. Ah, here we go. No one's coming to my left or ahead of me, thank God for that. You have reached your destination. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. It was all good. I nearly didn't make it. Yes. <laughs> so that's overtaking me there. So now we stop. We stop navigation with Waze. And we start with maps. Okay? Uh, yeah. So it's not a proper navigation system. It won't say left, right in 100 meters. You just have to follow the, the, the blue line here. Okay. <laughs> so sometimes the road goes a bit 10 meters left or right and you just, just follow snake the along line, with okay? it. Okay. And in case you have doubt, we put some blue spots. Oh, I see the blue ones. You, yeah, yeah. Like this on the, on the, on the road. Okay. okay. That's cool. All good for you? Yeah, perfect. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. Good luck. <laughs> Enjoy your drive. Uh, they put these little rocks out in the middle of the road. There's a van coming at me here. But there's little rocks out in the middle of the road, not in the middle of the road, they're on the side of the road, little blue, sti little blue signs on them. I'm going to, uh, supposed to get around this van. There's the van gone now. Off we go, so I'm following the blue line. The roads are very strange in Morocco. They split up into great big groups going all kinds of directions and there's no real mapping. That does make driving very interesting. Weirdly, the roads just all sort of converge again. Haven't made any traffic on it, but you can see how people are using the roads to move about Morocco. They're not official roads, they're not like on a map somewhere. Where is that going? There's no road out that way, is there? I still continue to follow the blue line alone on this little trip. It's very hard to follow with just a GPS cord that's when there's five or six different roads to choose from. Also being alone in the car made it very difficult to figure out where exactly the ground is when you're going down a hill. This is the scariest thing I've ever done. There's no way I can make it down there. Like there's no way. Because I couldn't see the bottom of the ravine or get out of the car because the car would just roll down the ravine on its own, I asked a photographer for a little bit of help from the top of the hill and he guided me down. <laughs> we are rocking off the ground like that is scary that is the scariest thing i think i've ever done in a car oh my god i'm going into another hit now oh the sweat's pumping out of me there's no steering there's still nothing this is terrifying 
kill an angle on the other end of it as well. Oh my God, that is so scary. Whew. I never want to do that again. <laughs> Morocco, what the hell? That is terrifying. Look at the angle, look at the angle. Let's just get the angle up here. Hold on a second. Look at the angle. That's where we, whoa, look at it, look at it, listen up. <laughs> That's it, perched. Oh my God. That was terrifying. Just so you all know, a little bit of poo came out. Right. Let's um, make some more tracks. We drove on into ever more remote areas. It was very hard to explain just how remote feeling the whole place is and how difficult it is for a road car, a standard diesel road car, to make its way through this kind of terrain. The sat nav, nothing, zero. We are on no road. <laughs> I got so far out in front of everybody else, I thought I'd pull over and just show you the kind of surfaces that this car, this Dacia Duster that you can buy in your dealership, was dealing with. So it's it's claggy, mucky, sort of weird rock, but it's just boulders, like. As far as the eye can see here, I can see down into waddies and all kinds of stuff over there, but I, like it's, as far as the eye can see to those mountains, you can see the mountains there just at a distance. It's an amazing surface out here. My little duster, my little duster has made it all the way here on road tires. Look around, it's just an amazing surface. I've never seen, I've seen bits of Morocco before, but not like this. Very odd surface. Would be, I'd say normally dust, only it rained yesterday. I got back on the road again. As you can see, the official road marking is there on the left-hand side of the road. Those rocks mark out some of the spaces we're supposed to be driving through. But we did get to some other bits while I was heading for lunch, and that's when it got even more interesting. Uh, let's go down there. I think I have to go down there. Looks like that way, yeah. Let's uh, truck on, see what happens. Around the corner, and on we go. Tell me that doesn't look like Mars there behind me. Apart from the tree, obviously, but look at it, look at it. It's, it's Mars, 100%. I continued to put the duster through its paces way beyond the capabilities of these cars. Most of the time, these cars end up just driving kids to school, you know, or going shopping or whatever. But this is one way you're gonna get up a hill. It's unbelievable. Ah, look where I am. You mind yourself now, Bobby. Look where I'm going, because there's no roads anyway. Then I started to find some other desert dwellers out here. It became like a scene out of Mad Max. <laughs> That's a quad bike. Oh, the quad, the scooter thing. Look. easy to get lost here because uh, once once you keep the mountains on your right hand side you mightn't be too bad on your left or right you know you'd walk in a particular direction but it disappears so quickly when you're just trundling along like this the road just disappears uh, I'm following along some quads in front of you it's kind of funny because the lads are doing an off-road course in the quads and I'm doing the off-road course and they see a duster sitting here with my air conditioning on window open I could be listening to tunes but I haven't put them on it's so interesting out here just to kind of trundle along and do this. Such a mad place to go, isn't it? Look at that, like. Yeah, that way. That's the road I'm on. Not much of a road. <laughs> Where's this going? All right. The last time I over a hill like this was a guy on the other side on a motorbike, just parked, having a smoke. Uh, there's 
nowhere to drive nicely in those roads. It just you just gotta deal with them. You just gotta drive over them, plow through them. Speed doesn't help. Going slow doesn't really help. They're just they're, uh, they're just there. It's like a washboard, like driving over a washboard. Spanish are deserting. I think you need a HGV license to drive that, but I'd give it a go. It's a uh, it's serious looking machine, isn't it? Anyway, I just pulled over on the side of the road up there, there, and another just to come around the car. You're never alone, like. <laughs> Here we are, our duster's made it. All carved up. Now I'm going to go up here and get some peas. The restaurant is all kinds of nationalities here, Spanish and Turkish and things. So we're uh, moving on. This is where I'm having lunch. It's a room with a view. <laughs> So I'm not so interested in food, I'm more interested in, you know, exploring. So look at the toilet. What I love is the sink. Look at the sink. It's literally a little barrel of water with a tap, some soap, this and a way of catching on the other side. And the towels are here. And that's your view. Okay, just had my lunch. Feeling better now. Oh yes, feeling better now. This is where we're stationed. <laughs> Amazing location. I want to get back on the road now. Because um, we're not finished with the with the desert. We have to drive through the rest of the desert to get back towards Marrakesh. We're going back to the hotel, I think. Uh, so more of this to come. Anyway, I might get a bit of chai and then hit the road. Alrighty then, um, just make sure your camera's up straight. We're just leaving lunch now, back into the desert. More driving. About an hour and a half to get back to um, a hotel. Then I'm in a hurry because Morocco authorities are a little bit odd. So if you ever come into Morocco, don't bring a drone. I didn't, just don't bring one anyway. But the problem is that you can't check in electronically with the airport. So you can't just go on to the British Airways app or whatever, whoever's bringing it down here, and check in. You don't accept them in the airport. You must report to them as you would normally. So you're gonna to have to report to a check-in desk. So you gotta allow a little bit of time for a check-in desk. So I'm in a bit of a hurry now to get back to the hotel. <clears throat> so I can get my transfer bus to the airport. Goodbye, desert, desert, lunch stop. It was wonderful, wonderful. You cannot believe just how beautiful and strange and weird the desert of Morocco is. It's not like what you think a desert is. Nothing grows here. Well, this, this area here has a little bit of growth in it. We've come through bits and I've shown you stuff is amazing. Now, let's get one thing straight here. Doing this off-road in a five-door SUV, small SUV, that spends most of its time trundling to and from school every day is no mean feat for Dacia. Because this is doing stuff, yes, they say it was built for, but this is the exact one you can buy in your local dealership. This is the, the Dacia Duster you can buy in any Dacia dealership in Ireland. Why would you buy another car? I have touch screens. I have Bluetooth, I have media players, I have the lot! I can play my music while going through the desert, while being air-conditioned in the sky. 
They've really done such a fantastic job with this car. You'd be mad, absolutely mad, not to look at this car while you're looking at other SUV type cars. Because it really is out of this world. Slowly watching, I've been slowly watching this castle thing up here from way back there. Little villagers drove through, her, men were shouting at me, Monsieur, Monsieur, Monsieur! Ah, yeah, it's okay, I just kept driving. Be safe! Uh, but this castle has been slowly looming up on the horizon. I thought it was a mosque first, but I don't see the normal sort of domed, pointed roof. Normally, mosques come with a sort of a dome roof. That one just looks like a round tower, like you'd see in Ireland. <laughs> like a watchtower. <laughs> Maybe it is a watchtower. You don't know. There's nobody watching on it at the Yeah. I don't know where I am now. I'm turning here, dude. Gates seem to be the most random things in the world. Very foreboding houses, aren't they? You wouldn't go up there now and ring the bell or anything. You know what I mean? Anyway, crack on. We are moving out. We're still going as straight as I can see to the end of that road. Way down there to some forestry. Looks like the end of the road. There was some goats over that way a minute ago. There's a man out there herding goats or sheep or something over that way. It's well over there. But I didn't see that. Other than that, I haven't really seen a whole lot of life and I haven't seen another Dacia Duster. Let's hop them on the bloody right road, but I'm following the map, so I'm okay. Normally someone would have come zooming up behind me at this stage. Because I like taking time with these jokes. I don't like to rush to break the car, you know, drive the crap out of it, hurt myself. I'm on my own, so if I get hurt out here, I'm on my own. But Dacia will come and help me, of course. That's why I have the trackers and all on me. God, I'm really sick of this surface though. It feels like years since it's on a nice little piece of tarmac. Nice little piece of metal, you know, black surface, black top, tires on the black top. Concrete would do. All of Morocco would lose its charm then if we start tarmacking all these roads. Half the excitement in this place is how remote it is, yet how safe. I see tarmac ahead, and we've come to the end of driving through a desert. That's what we did. We did it together. We're so neat. I should have fucking motor motorbikes. Ever look at these little scooters? They're running. I was waiting for this guy, but he's he's turn he's just turning. He's just crossing the road, and he's going off that way. Indication is not their strong point. Right, we're going to chance, we're going to chance, we're going to chance. We're off. Between the motorbikes. There we go. Oh, Tarmac, I missed you. I missed you, Tarmac. There's a man baiting some sheep over the corner. He wants some lamb for dinner. It's been, um... When I say epic, I mean epic. The drive has. I wish I met more Moroccans. I wish we had more sort of interaction with the people of Morocco rather than this kind of, um, there's one of these little motorbikes, rather than this we're just passing through the place. I would have liked to have traditional lunch. I know this all sounds very, I'm honored obviously to be over here doing this with Dacia. I'm in a pri very privileged position to do it, but I just, I love seeing a country. You never really get to see these things. Just kind of turn up, drive a car, get in an airplane, go home. This was a bit more relaxed. We kind of chilled out and did a bit more driving and, and you know, relaxing lunch in the middle of nowhere. Here's what to do with the bicycles here as well. See, they just load them up and stuff, cycle on to town. It's just, Super cool. 
That's super cool. Anyway, get back and do this. Um, we, we still have more journey. We've got to get back on the plane and fly back home again, back from here to Heathrow. Run through Heathrow again uh, to get to our plane, our uh, Aer Lingus flight back to Dublin. And then that's it. Anyway, in case this all goes wrong, uh, I hope you've hit the subscribe button because that's why I'm here, because you subscribe. We're just going back to Marrakesh now. Because you subscribe is the reason I'm sitting here doing these journeys. Um, you get to see maybe something you've never seen before on drives like this. It's been awesome to have you along as my passenger. My only passenger, I'm totally empty out. Uh, it's been absolutely brilliant to be here in Morocco and Marrakesh. Thank you, Morocco, for making me feel incredibly welcome. Everyone is so nice. They wave, they say hello, and you're passing by. It's just an amazing thing. It's brilliant here. Um, anyway, I strongly advise you to come down to Morocco, but I really strongly advise you to look at the Dacia Duster again. Look what I've done to this car today. Dry river beds and banging up and down places. Not to bother on it. The car just keeps on going. Amazing vehicle. Although we have a wake of vehicles behind us, we're all dying to overtake now. This old van is just creeping along here. So that's it, the end of the adventure. There's my car, my workhorse, my my friend actually. It's protected me all day. Uh, amazing landscapes, amazing place to go. God, I love New York. I love the travel part, it's just the kind of fun and atmosphere of the whole thing. Totally enjoyed it. And I'm gonna grab a little coffee and then I gotta get to the airport and skedaddle back to Ireland. Uh, Heathrow first, then Dublin from there. From Terminal 5 to Terminal 2, and that'll do me fine. And away we go. I can't wait. I can't wait to do it again. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, and until the next time, I'll see you on the far side of this Adobe thing. Oh, we made it back. What an unusual looking exterior this building has. Um, you still gotta correct my pass. So you can't do electronic check in. In Marrakesh, you gotta use your passport and collect your boarding card as normal. So you gotta go get a boarding card. Mm. We got a fella to help us collect the passes in the hurry. This man here is uh, the best concierge we've ever had. I feel like I'm in Die Hard, which is a Christmas movie, I don't care what anyone says. They're Christmas movies. Get over yourself. The blood and violence is not to get worried about. It's fine. But I am running a bit late for the plane, as it boards in five minutes. Fortunately, it's not a boarding gate, so I'm very far away. I actually have time to go upstairs to the lounge and have a little chat with myself there. But uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go over to the gate and chill out. Second flight of the day. There's some lovely people, though. Um, we had a man on the plane who's a magician, really nice guy, I'm looking forward to talking to him again. And I met a lovely human in uh, Morocco who got me through the airport in a real hurry. One of those VIP escort guys, tells you where to go, what to do. Anyway, this is Heathrow. Now I hear is in, let's see the sleigh bells ringing. It's the last, this is the last trip I'm doing this year. No more internationals for this year. I have some booked in for next year. See how that goes. Anyway, let's catch this flight. Let me show you something, let me show you something, let me show you something. I have all the rows of things. It's a nearly empty flight. It's actually nearly an empty flight. It's only a handful of people. Nice. Anyway, in the smooth now, we land drive on. Your nearest exit may be behind you. see there. Hardly anyone on the plane, but uh, at least I'm back now. We're going to get through passport control 
get over to the car and drive home. The, uh, the joys of modern journalism. I love it though. It's a great job. If you're into cars, there's nothing else like it. This morning I was driving in a desert in Morocco. So this that we used to take when we yes, were